I'm Ryan Condon, and back in 2019, weighing in at 26 plus stone, I entered into a well-known long-distance adventure called Race to the Stones, where I had to walk 100 kilometers, a 63 miles across two days. <laughs> <laughs> I've carried this for 100k. Wow. I completed this with the help of my friend Paul in 26 hours. In 2020, I signed up for another organized long-distance walking event, but due to the pandemic, it was canceled. So I planned, organized, and participated in my own adventure, all within the confines of my local area. This adventure I called Walk the Line, where I walked 60 miles non-stop through the trails and paths of my local area, which I completed in 21 hours without rest. Then in October 2020, I decided to try running instead of walking. So I attempted and successfully completed my 30-30 challenge, where I ran for 30 minutes every day for 30 days non-stop. And this challenge somehow led to me signing up for my first ever running event, the London Marathon. In this series titled My First Marathon, I'm documenting my training and preparation for the London Marathon in October 2021, all in aid of the Princess Alice Hospice. Right. Let, let me do it now because I'll forget otherwise. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's been a while since we uh, last spoke. When did you leave? Um, when did five you leave? years. Five Pretty years much ago. five years, yeah, yeah, I think. So we stayed in contact for a little while afterwards, but then obviously yeah. life uh, gets in the way, doesn't it? So how have you been? Very good. Yeah, very good. It's been a weird 18 months, isn't it, for everyone? But yeah, yeah it's um, all good, really. Can't complain life's good sun shining yeah How about you you've had change as well haven't you yeah um big change yeah we got um, um everyone got made redundant pretty much there was like literally a handful and I, I mean literally you could count it on one hand how many people stayed in the business from our side so it was at the time really traumatic actually because it was yeah. all i'd known for so long but um on hindsight now that i've got you know how long how, how long has it been like 15 months or something yeah. under my belt of of doing other things it was the best thing that ever happened um and all these things kind of converged together because i had some like uh i'd given up alcohol okay completely teetotal yeah. um i'd gone vegan like just before this like a couple of months before yeah. it and uh and i'd started running well i'd I'd been walking for a while and i'd been dabbling mm -hmm. with trying to jog but yeah it was hard work so I you know I didn't I didn't keep it up um yeah. and then and then the redundancy happened and I had all this spare time on my hands and all these things then converged all these things that I wanted to do and the business we started a business we started our own family business in the September of the year before so we, we were really really early days and it was going to be one of these things that was just going to be on the back burner and we were yeah. just going to invest into it as and when we had the time energy and, and the money to do so so when that redundancy happened all these things kind of converged on one. And I just threw myself into all of them things to keep me distracted mm -hmm. at the time. But that distraction turned into, you know, the best thing I've ever done. You know, my life completely different. I had a saying, like, life makes sense when you look at it in reverse. Yeah. Like, at the time, you, you kind of think, why is that happening? And, and then when you look back, you think, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's kind of panned out for the best. Yeah, yeah. How's, yeah. how's, um, how, how's your business going? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, it went really well up until kind of pre-lockdown and lockdown hit and there was kind of two months where we didn't do anything. Um, everything just stopped. And then it's grown steadily since then, actually, and we're probably going to have our best year ever this year. So yeah. Amazing. So, so look, I just, I thought I'd context it. Look, first off, it's it's great to see your face. Um, uh, for, uh, Likewise, you know, mate. Yeah, yeah. You're looking very well. Thanks very much. Yeah, you too. You too. Um, uh, and it's, you know, it's, I know it's been a while and I, I just want to context it and say that uh, I've, I've got loads of questions I want to ask you. I don't know how long you've got. I'm trying to pick your brain for things for myself selfishly, but I'm also trying to trying to document the journey that I'm going on. We look back on it and we can talk about you know, why and, and, and how I did this. And a big part of the journey that I've been on has been through support of people that have given me great advice, reading loads of books, yeah. but also watching people like you. So you've been a huge inspiration. Um, you probably don't know this, but watching your posts, um, you know, you're not you're not the most prolific social media um, influencer. <laughs> not you're not <laughs> you're not known for your influencing uh, ability on, on Instagram or Facebook. But but, you know, what you do post, I find incredible. And, you know, you've done some events um, which I've followed and I've watched you and I've seen a couple of your posts that you've put. And, and your, your wife is actually really good at sharing when you're doing them 
so that she's that, she's good on social media yeah she's, yeah that's why i don't do it she just does everything for me and yeah takes you should, me in it. it's you great should get, you should get her to ramp that up you've been doing some of these events are absolutely phenomenal and i just wanted to pick your brain talk to you a little bit about it have a chat about it you know trying to garner some some poles of wisdom for myself no i'm excited i'm always happy to chat about about running and helping anyway and yeah you know, i think what you're doing is phenomenal you know i think inspirational is a word i'd use to describe it as well i think the journey that you've been on is and are still on is is amazing mate it's absolutely brilliant and what you said earlier around i did a bit of running and then it hurt so i stopped yeah those are people stop at that point yeah yeah you know, so fair play for keeping on going and you know it, it, i was gonna <laughs> say i was gonna say it does get easier it doesn't really get easier no, no. particularly if you're the kind of person that wants to then do more yeah you know, it always, it's always hard but that's a good thing yeah uh, but then the challenges just get bigger it, 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 i appreciate you saying that because it's funny actually because i've had I've noticed that the people that give me the most advice, and this is going to sound, ah, this is going to sound cynical, and I don't mean it to, because I'm trying, you know, I'm 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 quite a positive person. But the people that give yeah. me the most advice are people that haven't run a day in their life, or they have run and stopped, um, yeah. and uh, and and they always say to me, you know, oh yeah, when it gets easy, when you, because I've got a terrible habit, like I did it today. You know, we had a meeting yeah. at one o'clock for this Zoom call, so I thought yeah. I'll go out at ten o'clock for a run. I thought I've got loads of time. I just do a quick. Yeah a quick five mile. I can't even believe that I say terms like quick five mile now. You know, these were terms that when, if someone yeah. had said to me a year ago, do you want to go yeah. for a five mile run? You know, I would have had a heart attack at the thought of it. Um, but I thought I'd go out today for a quick five mile run. And it was the first sunny day in ages. I was yeah. floating over the ground. I felt great. My legs weren't aching. I was energized. I just kept going. I forgot the time. And I looked at yeah. my watch. It was 12 o'clock and I'm five miles yeah. from home. You know, I wanted to ask you about your career about your running career, where it started from, a little bit about yourself, how long you've been running for, you know, why you do it, that sort of jazz. So yeah, it's kind cool. of an open, yeah. it's an open-ended question, really. Yeah. No, it sounds good. So, so I, I ran a little bit when I was a kid, so kind of teenager, um, joined the local running club, did a little bit, um, got to kind of late teens, early 20s, found other things <laughs> to take up my time that weren't quite as healthy. Yeah. And, um, and okay. kind of stopped, really. And which is it. Again, with hindsight, looking back, that's a bit of a shame, um, but it, it is what it is. Life takes over. Um, and I started again probably about 12 years ago, something like that. So just come back from working abroad. Um, I've always enjoyed running, wanted to get fitter because I wasn't that fit. I was eating loads of junk food and stuff when I was living abroad. Yeah. Um, got a place in the London Marathon, Yeah, you know, just right. like you. Yeah. Um, when was this? So this was 2010 was my right. first London Marathon, um, okay. was that 11 years ago? And yeah, since then, I haven't really stopped. Um, and yeah, I did it. Why did I do it? Health, mental health for me is really big. It's my, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big introvert. I'm a reflector. I think about things and that, that running gives me my time to do that. Yeah. You know, I can get out and reflect and think and, and, decompress from life you know busy very busy life young kids business you know that's my release and my my career has kind of gone well, I think you can go two ways once you get into running you can yeah. go and someone John O'Frary you, you might well know he's a really good runner he um he said people are either a compete or complete so compete is will run one distance and just want to get quicker at it and quicker at it and want to race it and do really well. Yeah. The complete person is they want to do different challenges and finish them. Um, and I'm firmly in that second camp. You know, I want to do lots of different things. So I kind of went half marathon, marathon, um, then went into triathlon, did up to Ironman in triathlon, stopped triathlon and said, what's next? Let's do ultra running and then work my way up to kind of where we are now, really. So that's kind of, um, yeah, that's kind of the journey. So the last 11, 11 years has probably been when I've been running properly. I just want to say that I love how you've just completely taken this phenomenal um, you know, career, really. I mean, I don't know what else to call it. You, you, you go out and compete in you know, absolutely mind-blowing events. And you've just said it in a way that sounds like someone who you know, plays football at the weekend um, and then goes off down the pub. Um, which, which again is, is, the, is plays into the mentality of a lot of people that I've come across. So part of my um, time, and I, I still don't call myself a runner. I, I had a chat with someone yesterday um, who, very similar to you, has been competing in some very long distance events, and 
you know, he kept referring to me as a runner and it still makes me feel uncomfortable because um, I don't see myself because I only started running in October last year. So I'm not even been running for a year. When I compete in the London Marathon, that will be one year where I have been running consistently. And when I say consistently, I mean every week without foul. Um, I made the mistake when I started running in October where I ran every day until I think it was the end of January. Yeah. And then my body kind of just collapsed I, I physically couldn't get out of bed I was exhausted I couldn't eat anything properly I couldn't give anything down and it yeah. was my body saying that I've been doing I've been overdoing it I had, I had a few days rest and then I was back on it again and I felt good um, and actually I was running better because I'd rested than I had been for a very long time but I don't call myself a runner I don't see myself as a runner because I've spent the majority of my life the other end of the spectrum what would have to be true for you to call yourself a runner oh are you asking me I thought, yeah. was, I thought he was about to tell me. I was like, no, yes. no, no, I'm yeah, go on, you. tell me, tell me. Yeah. Um, so I said to my missus the other day that I've got a bit of a, an imposter complex where yeah, yeah. because I see myself running with other people who have been doing it for so long and are so fit and are so, yeah, they've garnered so much experience. You know, I still weigh, I think about 17 stone. I haven't weighed myself for several months now. And I've, I know I've lost weight since my last weigh-in. Mm. Um, but I stopped weighing myself because this, this has gone past losing weight now. I did an event last year where I walked 60 miles nonstop and I absolutely loved it. And it was like, it was a mat, you know, masochistic, sadistic need in me to that, that type of pain, that type of endurance kind of fed something in me that I enjoyed. I didn't, there was loads of it. I didn't enjoy it, but there was a, there was a completion part of me, which you actually mentioned yeah, actually yeah, funny as yeah. you said that, um, I haven't answered your question, which is, you know, what would I have to yeah. do? I, um, I suppose for me, it would be, I don't know, really, I, I'd have to feel like I was part of something that was bigger than just my own ambition, which is to lose weight and which, which is what it started at. But now I enjoy it. I go out, I actually find myself thinking about running when I'm not running and I go out running when I don't need to. So today I didn't need to do 10 miles, but I did it because it was a good day. It was, it was sunny and I, I can lose myself in my own head. I think when I've completed the marathon, I have an event under my belt. Yeah, I guess my view would be, if you run, you're a runner. Yeah, I've had people that, say that. To no, me. if you run, yeah. and I think, I think what the journey that you're on is more, it's more inspirational probably than mine. Yeah, and for some of the stuff that you said there, you know, if you're going on a training run that's um, six hours, you know, that's an amazing chunk of time. You know, if you're doing a marathon, you know, the people that are at the back of a pack in a marathon versus the people at the front are out there twice as long. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's, it's twice as hard. You know? You're running for twice as long. You know, yeah. your training runs are taking longer. It's more of an impact on your life. So, yeah, it's. I've never thought perfect. of it. I've never thought of it like that. That is, um, yeah, that's a, that's a good point, actually. So, so moving away from me, because, you know, <laughs> I feel uncomfortable now. So, <laughs> so I wanted to ask you about you. So, so very recently, um, I can't remember what it was called. I, I did scour on Facebook to try and find the name of it, so I look professional. But um, recently, you completed an event which was 100 miles. Yeah. And you did that nonstop. Yeah. What was the name of that event? So that was that was a Thames Path 100. Right. Um, so it's run by a company called Centurion Running. We put on 50 and 100 mile ultra marathons. Um, so that's the second what second hundred I've done of theirs. I did one called Autumn 100 in 2019, um, which was kind of similar along the Thames path and along the Ridgeway. So similar to where Race of the Stones is. Um, and yeah, so this was, this is kind of where I've got to now is ultra marathons. So 50, anything over a marathon is an ultra marathon. Yeah. So it kind of starts with 50 Ks, 50 miles, 100 miles, and it can just get, it can just get silly from there. If you, <laughs> if you choose to. <laughs> see, see, because it's the kind of distance where you can only laugh when you mention yeah. it, can't you? There isn't any other reaction. Yeah. When you tell someone this weekend I'm about to run 100 miles, what's the reaction you get? It's ridiculous. It's um, it's what's weird for me is because I live in a world where you know I've got friends that are ultra marathoners on social media and stuff like that. It's normal to me. It's kind of normalised. But it's then when you talk to someone that, that doesn't come from that world, yeah, it's just it's disbelief. Yeah, yeah it's it's the questions are where do you sleep? <laughs> uh, so well, you don't you don't yeah. um when do you have dinner or well, you don't you just eat as you go when do you stop you don't um <laughs> people just can't, they can't believe it 
it's stupid, really. But it is. It's stupid. It is, but, yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. It's 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 something which, you know, one percent of human beings will ever experience. You know, there 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 are very few people that will Probably ever. Probably less than that. It's yeah. like, I think one percent is people that will do a marathon worldwide. Right. It's about one percent, um, and then ultras will be quite quite a lot less than that. I think um, it is stupid because you. You never train to run that distance because you no, can't. Because no. you'd be out all the time. So by the time you've run twenty miles, your legs are knackered. <laughs> you've, hit, you've hit your training and, fresh up, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. And yeah. then it's all up there after that. You yeah. can't. You got to think right. I've got another eighty miles of this. <laughs> 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 but if you think that, you won't. You won't finish it. You'll stop. Um, it's. Uh, you know, I've volunteered at them as well and worked at. You work at like the aid stations and stuff, and yeah. people just stop. They just go, like there was a woman on the race in May who gave up at, I say gave up, who, who stopped at about mile 60. And she was just like, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm not injured. I'm not broken. I just can't face another 40 miles of it. <laughs> they just, brain just checks out. Yeah, it does, out yeah. So about 30% imagine. of people didn't finish that race. And, and the one I did in 2019, about 40% didn't finish. So you get quite a lot of, um, yeah, quite a lot of dropout. And most of it is uh, his head drops out, says yeah. I'm, I'm just done, or yeah. stomach issues, can't get yeah. food on. Which is a major issue for energy because you know yeah. that, that that level of endurance is is all yeah. about fuel, isn't it? You need it. Yeah, yeah. your stomach shuts down because it diverts the bloodstream away from there to your essential organs to keep you yeah. alive. Yeah, and your stomach's not essential, so it kind of you got to be really careful <laughs> with what you eat, otherwise it it's comes amazing. back out. In many ways. How many 100 mile events have you done in all throughout your I've entire two, career? I've done 200 miles. I've done one 24 hour where you run four mile laps as metal five mile laps. And I did about 80 miles in that. Um, I've done a hundred K. So I've done race of the stones. Um, that was my first ultra. And you ran uh, that straight through. Ran that straight through. Yeah. 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 So that was my first one. That was about 12 and a half hours, I think. So that, that was your that was your first ultra marathon. First ultra, and what, and what yeah. year was that? I think it was 2016. Right. I think 2017, maybe. Yeah, a few years back. Uh, it's good. It's a great race, isn't it? Lovely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal scenery from what I remember of it. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, when I did it, you know, it was um, yeah, I was a very different person. To I was funny yeah. enough, I, I was on the phone to someone rushing back. Um, I was on the phone to someone just before this who's doing it in in three weeks. Yeah. Um, they're walking it and you know he rang me and asked me you know what what because he's he's in the mindset where I was three weeks yeah. before it what do I take and he's got this backpack full of gear and I just yeah, went don't yeah. take any of it because it's all it. yeah. you won't need it you won't yeah. need it you'll be too tired to even take it off your back what you've described there and I want to I want to get into some of the things that you've done um to, to get through those events 10 miles for me has been a, a, a hurdle that I've been trying to get over for god mm. knows how long because I've managed to get to five miles I've managed to get to six miles quite quickly I look at someone who runs 100 miles or even just someone that runs an ultra forget about distance whether it be the race of the kings at the weekend which was 53 miles or whether it be race of the stones which was 63 miles or whether it be 100 miles that you've completed yeah. twice you I look at that in the same way as men landed on the moon you know, it's mm. phenomenal, great achievement. I believed it happened, but that will never be me on the moon. So you're someone who, like Neil Armstrong, I look at and think is a phenomenal achievement. Absolutely, um, you know, groundbreaking, human endurance. You're at the pinnacle of what I think the human body can endure. And you've done it twice. You know, what? what why would you do that? <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing another one in october i know i, I wanted to come on to that yeah and because uh, that was going to be that was going to be my my big teaching moment cut where, that out we'll cut that out no no, no we'll leave we'll leave it <laughs> in but after you went i did it because of a b and c i was going to go and you're about to go and do it yeah. again yeah 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 um so i think mindset is so important and you know i think back to so if i think back to actually doing an iron man so for me an, an iron man was harder than doing an ultra because I've run for quite a while, I couldn't swim. So I couldn't swim front <laughs> crawl. I, couldn't, I could swim, you know, holiday swimming. <laughs> I couldn't swim, head in the water, front crawl. I went to the tri club when I decided to do it. So, so remind, r- remind anyone that doesn't know what, what an Ironman yeah. is. So, cool. so an just Ironman, is, so it's triathlon. It's a 2.4 mile swim, um, which would be in a lake or the sea, 112 miles on a bike. 
uh, and then a marathon. So a full right. 26.2 marathon. Okay. So the marathon bit, I knew I could do that. I've done that before. I didn't own a road bike. I've right. never ridden one. Okay. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't swim. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought this would be a good, great way to spend your weekend? Well, I remember, I remember being at Blenheim Palace. I don't know if you've ever been to Blenheim. It's a, yeah, I have, the, yeah. The yeah. Out to Joe. There's a beautiful lake there and they have a triathlon. Is it, I was sitting there with my, my wife, Katie, and we were looking at the yeah. lake and I was thinking... I'd love to do the triathlon here. I just can't swim, so I'm not going to bother. Right. And she was like, well, why don't you just learn to swim? <laughs> I was like, I could just do that, can I? <laughs> Stop making excuses and yeah. get up there and do it. Right. So that's what I did. So I learned to swim, learned to ride a bike, so on and so on, and, and, and got to do an Ironman. But I was, in my mind, was I could never do that. Right. I was like, that is not possible to do all of that and then run a marathon and do an Ironman in that time. It's not possible. Um, but then a couple of weeks later, I started thinking, well, it kind of is possible. And then a month later, I'm thinking, well, yeah, I could see how you could do that. Now you could train for that. Yeah. And then three months later, I'm thinking, yeah, I can do that. Right. OK. I can do it. So it kind of you have to get your brain kind of on that journey. To so, so in those weeks that you were thinking it. about this and you were going through that process, you weren't training. You were just mentally. I was running. Yeah, just running, but not right. doing anything for triathlon. Right. No. Okay. And then. So you're just talking yourself into it? Talking yourself into it, but it's kind of like what you do with work, because you then just give yourself little goals. And right. You go, right, you know what, if I've got to do an Ironman, I need to learn to swim. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to get lessons and I'm going to join a club or whatever. I need a bike. So let's get a second-hand bike from someone and let's go out and try it and see how far we can go. <laughs> and then you go, well, let's enter my first sprint, which is a shorter triathlon. I've done that. Let's enter a slightly longer one. And you kind of plan it out and have your right. steps. Okay. So where you're at now, you'll get to doing 10 miles consistently. And then you'll go, right. Yeah. Do 15 miles consistently. Yeah. And yeah. then once you've done your marathon in what is it, October? October, yeah. You could be fit. You, you could 24 hours after that be going, right. There's a 50K I can sign up for. <laughs> 20, 24, 24 hours afterwards. But I'm, I, gonna, uh, I, I'm gonna be thinking about a 50k am i <laughs> but so i am um, in the 100 miler that i did in may yeah i was chatting to my wife katie like three quarters of the way through the race she came out to meet me at, at abingdon and walked with me for a bit because i was done <laughs> and i was like i'm never doing this again 100 miles are stupid i'm not cut out for it ridiculous stupid yeah. sport yeah um i'm never doing it again the following morning i'm like where's the next one really yeah and because i i remember you i remember your post on facebook yeah, yeah. which we'll come on to because it wasn't easy was it the 100 miler no we haven't really we haven't really given it its full due and respect in this conversation about how hard yeah. because it came across it really did you know this is coming this is coming from an amateur marathon pretender um and even i could sense how hard and how much of an endurance event that was for you the day after completing that you've signed on facebook you've committed to a sign up of yeah. one in october october yeah. in october which is called uh, autumn 100 autumn 100 so another 100 miler another 100 miler um same running company that are great centurion running um i've done it before and the goal is to just it's kind of a time goal i want to hit, hit a certain time goal of yeah. getting under 24 hours um but it's not just that i want to I want to feel like I've done myself justice yeah. in the race and I've run it because I've kind of <clears throat> by 50 miles at this one in May. Yeah. I, I couldn't, couldn't run. My legs were gone. Yeah. My legs were absolutely gone. So I was trying to run and it just wasn't working. So I want to try and, yeah. So do you, do you feel, I mean, disappointed has got to be the wrong word, but do you feel, for, you know, for, for lack of a better word, do you feel disappointed with your, with your attempt yeah. in May? Yeah. Disappointing is not the right word. Yeah. I feel... I feel really proud of finishing it. Yeah. Because it's quite easy when you get to 50 miles and you go, right, hang on. It's taken me 11 hours to get here. Yeah. It's going to take me probably 16 hours to do the rest of it. Yeah. In the dark, on my own, <laughs> in the rain, through the mud. Yeah. yeah. It would be very easy yeah. to go, oh, there's my wife. She's got her car. I'm done. Let's just get in the car. Yeah. Now. Yeah. No one will know. No, no, one, no, no, yeah. no one would judge you. No one yeah, would care. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. But, you, but it did, um, you would care. You would care. I would care. And yeah. I was, there was never any doubt I was going to finish. Right. I always knew I was going to finish. Yeah. Um, 
but so so disappoint is not the word. I'm proud of the fact that I yeah dis- disappoint is not the word. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. um, it's just knowing that I can do it, do it quicker than that. And it's yeah. not it's not always about the time, but I think I know I can do pro- probably well under twenty four. You know, I've done fifty see, miles see, in I, nine and a half hours. So. I love this when 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 talking to to marathon runners and especially ultra marathon runners, which is what you are. I mean, you are firmly your 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 past your your past ultra marathon. You know, there, is there a term for someone who runs a century? Is there a century? Yeah, runners? not really. Um, no. Just no, just just, ultra just marathon, kind of all and just all awesome people. There's some people that do it that take it to the nth degree. Absolute extreme. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a guy from Bicester called John Stocker who's just broken a world record for something called a, we're getting off topic a bit, but for something called a backyard ultra, which is, I don't know if you've come across it. I have, yeah. Yeah, I have, you run yeah, yeah, yeah. four mile loops every hour and you need yeah. to be back to start the next loop Yeah. when the hour timer goes. Yeah. They did 83 hours non-stop. That's 330 miles with no sleep running four mile loops every hour well let's say about every 50 minutes that's unbelievable you know? isn't it so i look at someone like him and think well that's just so that's your next challenge that. is it is that next no. year <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you say that now you say that's because you've got that's because you've got an october challenge yeah yeah because when people say to me you know when you've done the marathon you're going to do something and i'm like no that's it i've done my marathon i've, I've ticked that off on my bucket list I can say that I have, because that's always been something in my life. One of the reasons I, I want to I run the London Marathon, I don't want to run the Brighton Marathon. I don't want to run the New York Marathon. I've always wanted to run the London Marathon, and I have fought to for now to get a place in it. I had to go um, and really kind of beg, borrow, and steal from the charity that I wanted to run it for. The charity is very close to my heart, and and but, but it had to be, because they offered me initially – you know, all due respect to them, I think they looked at me and thought, like a lot of people have in my life, and underestimated my determination. They definitely didn't underestimate my physical capabilities because when I asked to do it, I wasn't in any way, shape or form ready to run a marathon. But I knew that I had a year to do that and I knew that I could do it. But one of the reasons I wanted to do the London Marathon was because I used to live, my mum and dad still do, on the route. And I remember as a child looking at these heroes, looking at these people. And these were in the days before energy drinks. These were in the days before, you know, gels and tablets and, you know, um, all the things that people take to give them the the, the power to keep going. These were absolute heroes and these were these were in the days before people dressed up and stuff like that yeah. so this was these were people that wanted to to accomplish something and i remember looking at these people and seeing them in the same way that i look at someone like you who runs 100 miles and thinking you know just in absolute awe mm. um, and very inspirational and it's always been something that i wanted to do so when people say to me once you've done the london marathon i can say i've done that ticket i've got you know i've got the t-shirt literally got the t-shirt and the medal um what are you going to do next um but when you've done 100 miles in a time that you're happy with, where your legs haven't given out, yeah. where it didn't feel like you were climbing Everest, there'll be something bigger and harder, yeah. won't there? Yeah. Yeah, there will be. And there, I, I think going back to what you were saying, I think you're right to pick London first. Yeah, it's great you got that connection to it, but yeah. it's the best marathon in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without a shadow. And I've not run every marathon in the world, but from what I've read and having run it twice... yeah. Uh, there in the stories of it there's nothing nothing yeah. better yeah Some it's, of the best it's not the hardest it's that. not the hardest there, there are much harder marathons out there yeah 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 it's not about that it's no. about the it's still a marathon so it's still yeah. hard yes yeah. um because that's the thing it kind of marathon running gets normalized a bit now because yeah. you get people going out and doing ultras and and stuff like that people almost look at non-runners almost look at marathons and go well hang on that's not a big thing anymore yeah. it is yeah running a marathon is is you know, running a is, is as hard as anything out there yeah yeah you know, it's, it's, it's they're really really tough it's a massive achievement to do them but no london's great it's the atmosphere the, the yeah. crowds the route itself you know especially if you're you know yeah we're both you know i was born in london yeah you know, it's, it's yeah sports, football team there you know work there it's you know it's my home city out of the capital city and run yeah. to run around yeah. it with closed roads it's phenomenal yeah, yeah it's, there's nothing better you'll absolutely love it and then and then you'll sign up for your ultra the day yeah. after. <laughs> <laughs> I can promise you one thing. I'm not signing up. If I do, and this is a massive if, right, and I'm not caving at all, and I'm not saying this yeah. now because uh, it scares the living daylights out of me. But but if I do, I'm not coming anywhere near anything you do, 
ever because <laughs> because because that is um I, I couldn't even in i couldn't even imagine 100 miles mm, yeah i couldn't imagine it i mean yet yeah no well no no not ever <laughs> <laughs> and what, is, what would be what will be next then i know you need to get this done and so, everyone's focused on that but so I, I genuinely i won't allow myself to think about it because yeah. the, the london marathon still doesn't feel in because when i did race of the stones i was overly confident i was overly arrogant you, you know i know this yeah. doesn't come across i'm not normally like that at all am i not but all, i was, no. <laughs> I, was <laughs> <laughs> I was i was cocky i thought i could do it i thought i could you know i was 24 stone ground you know i ended into a 63 mile walking event at 20 at 24 stone um you know i could have done myself a serious injury but i completed it and i did it and i was i i, I don't remember the finish line i don't remember uh, it's all on video and I, I watched back the video and you know my missus was there my children were there and i want to do an event very similar to yours where i'm able to run it and i'm able to enjoy it and i'm able to do it in a time that i feel is good for me so i'm not competing against anyone else other than myself but isn't is a respectable time and when i say to people and this comes back to my point which is people give me advice that have never run in their life and everyone keeps saying well you know if you get tired you can walk it and that's like the worst thing you can say to me i don't i haven't entered the london marathon because i want to walk it i've walked two walking events i did i designed my own backyard walking event where i walked 60 miles non-stop and i walked an official one race of the stones and i've had enough of walking events and when i did 50 miles the other day i did it and it was fairly comfortable i wasn't at the end of it out you know dead you know and i did that in 13 minutes a mile yeah. i ran 10 miles the day after just to prove because i read in a book um one of my running books i read in a book that one of the best things you this, this goes against everything else i've read in other books one of the best things you can do when you run a distance that has pushed you to, to your limit is to try and then run another distance that you know is not easy and i ran that 10 miles in the quickest time i've ever run 10 miles in which was at 12 minutes 40. and i want to end, i've entered the marathon not because i want to walk it and be, because i want to enjoy the music and the carnival atmosphere and run over tower bridge and i don't just want to run the tower bridge section I want to run the entire thing. I want to run it from the big moment I start to the moment I finish nonstop as fast as I can, as fast as I can, which means I finish not 10 miles at 11 minutes and then walk the rest of the way. Does that make sense? So that's why that makes, I've entered it. it. Makes perfect sense. I think you can, I think you're looking at it the right way. You know, I think it's a, it's a competition with yourself. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it I is. Think, yeah. I think that's a good goal to have to, to keep running it the whole way. Um, yeah, I think it's great. I think it's a great event to it's a great event to do. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, and and, and I know I'm going to get emotional because my mum, as I say, my mum and dad live in Deptford, and it goes yeah. through from Blackheath down through through Greenwich, and it goes down past my mum and dad's house, like literally past their house. Yeah. So they're going to be stood there, and I know I'm going to get emotional at that point because that's where, I, as a kid, every London, I never missed one every yeah. April on that bridge you know, throwing water off the bridge, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's going to be a great event. But anyway, getting back to you, um, one of the things I wanted to ask you was around, so that, that hundred mile that you did, cause I'm, I'm obsessed by this hundred miles that you did yeah, yeah. and what made me more set obsessed. And I made, when I saw your post, I was like, I need to talk to him. I haven't yeah. spoke to you for ages. I remember sitting in a meeting, actually, I don't know if you remember this, I have a memory of you and it stayed with me weirdly there's loads of things about you that stayed with me graham but this is this this was a particular one that stayed with me about you which was we were sat in a meeting once and um we did a check-in because like we used to do do you remember the check-ins how'd you yeah, feel yeah. and all this yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know we all gone around and we all said the same usual nonsense that we all said but you said i ran a marathon yesterday <laughs> <laughs> i ran a marathon yesterday i remember sitting there going and I was absolutely blown away by it. You know, I'm, I think I said something really like stupid, but you know, that was me, but I was absolutely blown away by it. And I, and that really inspired me. And I remember sitting there thinking, wow, that's amazing. He ran a marathon yesterday. Like it was nothing. Like you said it yeah. as if you'd, I cut the grass yesterday, hmm. you know, and it, it blew me away. And, and, and when I saw your post from, um, from your Thames path 100 yeah. and how hard it was, I really, really came across in that post and that, and that kind of intrigued me more than if you had blown it out the water. If you'd have run that hundred miles at a steady, you know, what was you aiming for pace wise, just out of interest? So it's tricky. So I did, um, so you're always going to slow down, even if it goes well, you're going to, yeah. you're going to slow down. So I yeah. did the, the first marathon I did in five hours. So that was, 
I think I was aiming for 11 and a half minute miles, I think. Okay. Start well, the, with. The, Not the whole thing. Okay. So start off at 11 and a half, right. and then it's going to drop. Okay. And you can drop it to then 13s yeah. and, and get up to even 80 miles at that rate. Even if in the last 20 miles you fall apart, which is very likely, you're still going to come in about 22 and a half hours. Okay. So that was kind of the, that was a, that was a game plan really. Yeah. Was to try and do that. Um, and it went well. So yeah, first marathon, five hours, bang on schedule. And then getting to Henley at 50 miles, I was then about 50 minutes behind schedule. And the main reason for that is the, the, oh God, the oh, one of the reasons for that was the weather was just awful. It was, it was, a, it was an appalling weekend, really, wasn't it? Really wet, really yeah. windy. And yeah. um, I, I weirdly thought, right, the Thames goes this direction. Yeah, from London to um, to Oxford it goes like that. Yeah, the wind direction's kind of doing this. So I thought you're going to get a bit of a head, bit of a tailwind for most of it. But I obviously forgot the Thames isn't a straight river. Yeah, <laughs> the Thames does that. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So any time we were going in that direction, it was a full so you, on. So you were heading into it as much as you were running away from it. Our headwind. So yeah. the three miles into Henley it was across open fields. Yeah. Into a 30, 40 mile an hour wind, just straight headwinds and. <laughs> God, and you were battered by it. Not a fan of headwinds. You just strike. You, you run, but you realise you're actually moving just as slow as you would do if you were walking because of the wind. Yeah. And then, yeah, I got to Henley, and I was like, from then on, it was just a bit of a the endurance bit of, event. A yeah. Bit of a battle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so because yeah. so, when I saw the post, that intrigued me more. That intrigued me more. The fact that you struggled as much as it came across, um, and how you're describing it, I thought that was more impressive yeah actually yeah then. that's what i'm proud about i think that so the first one i did the autumn 100 yeah that's arguably a harder course because it's got more hills in it along the ridgeway okay and 50 miles of it's along the ridgeway it's got more darkness because it's in october so it's got yeah. about 13 hours of night time which makes it harder okay um it was my first one and i was quicker doing that than i was doing the thames path right so and that and i got an injury in that about 70 miles in my knee went okay. um I couldn't I could barely walk for about two weeks afterwards um but I was still quicker doing that so that's the thing the Thames path is you think because it's flat it'll be easy yeah it's not because you you're using the same muscles all the time for the whole thing yeah. you get no variation in what you're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. um but yeah that's kind of where it it's kind of how the race panned out and it was um, yeah, soggy and muddy, and yeah. and I'm blaming the conditions. Yeah, but the guy that won it ran the quickest trail hundred miler ever in the UK. So the conditions can't have been that bad. Wow! So he got the UK record for trail ultra the quickest ever trail hundred. Yeah. Hundred. And how, yeah. how fast was he? Oh, I think he was. It's ridiculous. About thirteen hours. Right. Maybe even maybe even less than that. He ran even a hundred miles in thirteen yeah. hours. Yeah. Yeah, but he's a um, he's a great runner. He's like a two twenty, I think, marathon runner. So and he's moved into ultras. So right. yeah, he's he's a proper runner. Yeah, a proper. Runner. He yeah. sounds it. To be fair, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think he calls himself a runner? <laughs> I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And and I think I say these are proper runners. You know, I think that. When you're combining running with a job and family and... Yeah, of course. You've got to decide how much time you give it. Yeah. And do you want it to be something that takes over your life completely? Yeah. And personally, for me, I don't. No. You know, I, I run less than you. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's, one of, that's actually one of my questions. So let's move on to that then, because that sounds like a nice um, link. So tell me about your normal um, non-event training week or training month, and then talk, talk to me about what you did as you built up into the Thames 100 that you did... Yeah. Um, a few weeks ago usually I'll kind of have peaks during a year so I'll maybe have two main races that I'll do in a year uh, and when I'm not training for that it's just going out and running okay and that'll be three or four miles in the week you know maybe oh, really? maybe three times something like that and then a weekend seven or eight miles um I run with my dog so we kind of we do a lot of I do a lot of the runs with the dog so yeah. I just run to get uh, exercise and, and stuff and then in the build up to this, so it was about a 20 week plan I was following that I just wrote myself, averaging 40 miles a week. So right, okay. like that. 
Okay. And then that 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 was in build up to the Thames 100. Yeah. Okay. So what, what did that what did that look like? Normally four runs a week. Tuesday might be seven or eight miles. Wednesday might be seven or eight miles. Friday might be 12, and then Saturday you might be 22. That was it. I did less long runs for this one than I did for the last one. At, at what pace would you be doing those miles in? People that are new to running usually make two mistakes. Yeah. Um, mistake number one is running too much. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> going 60, out. 65 miles last week. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Going out, doing too many miles, thinking, yeah, yeah I've got that plan, but I'm not going to follow it because no. I'm going to go and run how I feel. Yeah. Again, yeah. me. Yeah. Then getting injured, not being able to run. Not that, able to that's not me again. yet. Touch wood. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and the second thing they do is to, they run at a similar intensity for most of their runs, which is actually too fast. Yeah. But in an ideal world, you want to be, you want 80% of your runs to be slow. Yeah. And slower than you'd run the marathon. Um, and then you want 20% of your runs to be really fast, like really fast. Okay. And that's where you get the most kind of benefit because it is training different parts of your body to do different things my weekend runs will be slow and that's very slow uh, for me that's kind of anywhere between nine and a half and you know ten and a half minute miles depending on the terrain um, but I'll run the quick runs you know that could be intervals or up and down hills and that could be six and a half minute miles so it's right. there's a, such a big difference between the between the ones that we do, your slow runs are training your like your endurance engine, uh, and you want it to be slow. And then your quick runs are just helping you run quicker. Really, yeah. is the simplest way of putting it. I have started to get a lot better at trying to take instruction, especially when it comes to running, because I know nothing about it, but I'm learning. Which is one of the reasons I'm, you know, speaking to people like you, Graham, because yeah. you guys, you know, someone like you, know a lot more about this than I do. So yesterday I tried to do a speed run for the first time. So I yeah. thought, um, because in my book, in my marathon book, which is actually downstairs, it says very exactly what you said, yeah. word word for word, word okay. for word. So it's almost thing. it's almost as if you actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> believe it or not. I know. Funny that. It yeah, yeah. Back you. <laughs> <laughs> so so I tried a speed run yesterday, and uh, uh, and I thought, do you know what? I do three miles as fast as I physically can. So I ran as flat out as I, as, I, as I could. So, and that was exactly 11 minutes and I got to 1.4 miles and I, I was dead. I was absolutely cream crackered. I couldn't get to three miles. I was really annoyed. I tried, but I knew that I would be dropping it back down to 12 and in 13 and I'll be back at my 60, 70% capacity. A really, really slow run. I'm averaging at over 13 minutes. Um, yeah. I want to get to 12 and a half minute miles, yeah. which isn't fast, but it's fast for me. And if I can run the marathon at 12 and a half minutes, I think that would be an acceptable pace. But I am over indexing because I am still too heavy. My body still won't allow me to do the distances that my mind wants to do. So I'm motivated. But I can feel that I'm slowing down because I'm still too heavy. I'm still carrying too much. Uh, my body shape's completely changed. When you knew me, I was 28 stone, yeah. believe it or not. When I gave up alcohol, I lost. And then when I first weighed myself, I gave up alcohol a couple of months before it. Lost a couple of stone, I think. I must have yeah. done because my clothes immediately changed. I my changed shape. And then I weighed myself. I was 26 stone. And then yeah. when I did Race of the Stones, I was 24 stone. And I'm now, my last weigh-in, I was just over 17 stone. So I think I'm under or about 17 stone now. But I'm still too heavy. So to get to the marathon, I'm over-indexing on distance because I see that as my way of losing weight as much as possible that will then get me to my 12 and a half minutes yeah yeah I, I agree so I think if you're looking at a marathon plan for me the most important run of your week is your long run yeah so there's normally one at least one run a week that's long you know if you can if you can't do anything else try and get that in yeah um, I, I'm already the fittest I've ever been yeah but I I want to I want to be I don't want to carry 17 stone if I'm carrying 15 stone by the time I get to the marathon, that's that's better than where I am now. But also, I enjoy it so much. I do, yeah. you know, and, and this isn't something which I hear a lot from a lot of people. I only hear it from very few. When I go out running, there's very few runs now. When I started it in October, I hated it. I hated yeah. it. I hated every second of it. But now when I go out, I enjoy it. I look forward to it. I look forward to tomorrow where I can make an excuse 
to go out and run and I run in the morning before the kids get up so as I don't have to miss out on it if I've got a day where I'm all day at work I run after work in the dark or you know because I do a lot of late evenings because of the gym I run at two three o'clock in the afternoon and and that's what's increasing and when someone says to me you shouldn't be running 65 miles you should be doing 25 miles uh, it's like someone telling you you know you shouldn't be doing your hobby it's tricky it is it is really difficult and you know, you've got to do what's right for you yeah and what for you I think for me but I am worried about injury yeah and that's what I was going to yeah. say for me yeah. I've kind of lived by a bit of a golden rule with running which is it's better to be 10% under trained than 1% over trained okay. Yeah. okay 10% under when you get to the marathon race day you might be a couple of minutes slower than you planned yeah, yeah? If you're 1% over you might not make it you might not make the start line right yeah and and this is so I had a London Marathon place when I was probably 25, 26, something okay. like that. And okay. um, I didn't run it because I got injured. Okay. Because I ran too quick and I ran right. too much. Okay. And I said, I'll just go out and do what I'll do. And because it's it's kind of counterintuitive. Yeah. That book and me, I'll say, run less, run slower, apart from the 20% when you run quicker. And you kind of think, well, hang on, how am I going to get better if I run less and run slower. Yeah, it is it it's counterintuitive. Sense, it is it's completely, completely especially when you're enjoying it as well. Because I'm Absolutely. thinking in my head, you know, it was so hard for me at the beginning, Graham. Honestly, it was so hard. Like thinking back on it now, I get emotional just thinking about it. When I started in October and those videos, I mean, I've made fun, entertaining videos about it because I'm A, I want it to be memorable. Oh, <laughs> Apart from the but I mean, this is gonna be fun and entertaining. <laughs> it's just gonna be your face for I don't know, 53 minutes. Um <laughs> But but the when I look back on it, it's um, I put so much effort into it. I've made them fun and entertaining because I want people to watch them for the donations, and I want it to be a story that people donate towards, not just a charity. Another person asking for money. But when I look back on it, that wasn't easy. I was throwing up every day. I hated every second of it, but I wouldn't give up and I wouldn't stop. But now I've got to the point. I've got through that. Why would I want to run less when I'm enjoying it so much? So I guess my my question would be. Are you then having weeks where you run a lot less or are you consistent? Yeah, I won't run 65 miles this week but just because of time. If I had time, I probably would. Yeah. But then, but are you having weeks where you go, I can't run this week because I'm knackered? Um, yeah, yesterday. So I did a speed run yesterday because I was knackered. And then, and then that knackered me out even more. So I thought yeah. I'd do an easy run today. But then I ended up running 10 miles because yeah. it was such a nice day and I was enjoying it. If you're doing runs that mean you can't then run for a couple of days because you're so knackered, that's probably not the ideal yeah, yeah. place yeah, to yeah. be. Kind of need to think about how your body works. So your body doesn't get stronger when you run. It right. gets stronger when you rest. E easiest way of explaining that is if you, um, if you go to the gym and do weights, yeah, just as an example, the lifting of the weights is actually destroying your muscles. It's damaging them. Right. Then what happens is then when you sleep and rest the following day, it rebuilds itself stronger than it was before. And it's the same with running. The actual act of running is not making you, it's it, in the long run it is, but it's not actually making you stronger and fitter. It's what happens afterwards when you rest, that's when you come back stronger. If you don't give yourself the time to rest, you're not then, you're not giving your body a chance to make the, kind of adaptions that it needs to make and to get stronger the analogy you've used there with the with the weights actually resonates i can see yeah. your point there but it does make sense because people bang on about rest all the time yeah. you know i've i got a book let me just show you i got a book because it was recommended to me called eat and run yeah yeah um yeah. And, and this guy scott jurick yeah. um who's, who's who's apparently a very well-known ultramarathon yeah, runner i'd never heard of him until i read his book he talks about food and rest probably yeah. the same if not more than he does about running and training that resonated with me because um but i've been vegan now for what 18 months and uh forced upon me completely forced upon me by my daughter yeah yeah, yeah. my missus was like yeah we can do that and then forced me and so me and my other daughter who's like yeah. me who were massive meat eaters we uh we got we got forced upon us but i was really struggling because my whole ethos was turned on its head like, how can you have the energy how can you have the protein how can you have you know how can i maintain my running training on plant-based diet 
so that's where someone recommended him to me. I can't remember who recommended it, but he 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 talks about it quite a lot. And then I came across Rich Roll. Who Rich talks Roll, about, yeah. 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 And he really hit home with me because he started talking about how he was an alcoholic and he had a midlife crisis. And it was like it was like listening to where I was when I came up. To his podcast. I haven't listened to his podcast. I've, I've, I'm in the process at the moment of listening to, I'm halfway through his audio book. Okay. When, when, I, when I go out running, I listen to podcasts more than music. You know, they, they were inspirational stories yeah. that resonated with me as to why I was doing it. And that gave me a lot of context because there was many, many days, many dark days through this running training that I've been doing where I'm thinking, why am I doing this? Who, yeah. what, you know, who am I kidding? But then I, I listen to stories like your story that you've, you've told today. I listen to people that I've never met that, that live on the other side of the world. And I think that that resonates with me and that gives it context and it gives what yeah. I'm doing context because we've all got our own individual stories. We've all got our own individual battles yeah. and we've all got our own challenges that we're trying to do for reasons that only really come into focus after we've done them. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. And we're, we're all doing it for, well, some of us are doing it for the same reasons, others are doing it for, for different reasons, but, but we got to have that motivation and drive yeah. which you've got and... Yeah, you know, I think that yeah, you know, you've got a strong enough mindset to do whatever you turn your mind to. I think I appreciate. It. I've got I've got confidence. I've got that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can you stop laughing every time I say that? I'm going to edit it. <laughs> will, will you ever do one of these events, one of these crazy events in another country, like the yeah. um, like the Marathon de Sable? That's in like it is in the desert, and you have to carry yeah. your own gear and. Yeah, so I'll probably I wouldn't do that one. Um, that's a bit. My understanding of it from people that have done it, it's a bit upper middle class walk in the sand. Oh, really? Lots is it? Right. Yeah. Okay. But lots of people in the city in London and stuff that go there. And what one would you have your sights on? I want to do at some point the Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc. Okay. Which you circumnavigate Mont Blanc through three countries. It's over 100 miles, but it's the up and down. So it's up yeah. and down mountain passes. So that'll be amazing. Um, the Western States 100 in America. Yeah, I've heard of this one, yeah. yeah that's where the first, kind of first 100 miler, that's this weekend, yeah. actually. Right. That'd be amazing. I watched, yeah. a, I watched a YouTube video about a guy that the um, he broke the record world record for for that not too long ago, and he still holds it. He um, warms it. Yeah. yeah, and he um, and it was it was a uh, it was, they were talking about his training and the efforts they went to, and it was just mind blowing because yeah, it's because the route itself is just forest and you know Trail. trails and yeah, it goes up slow to set off with. Like, it does, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'd be amazing. But then I'd like to do kind of multi day stuff um, at some point when I've got a bit more time. Yeah, kind of, um, yeah. There's loads. There's loads. But I also, this is probably what's next after this one is yeah. a um, is a track hundred miler or track twenty four hour. Okay. So you just run around a running four hundred meter running track. Okay. <laughs> <That's me>. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're going to take all the good things out of a hundred miles. So the only good things yeah. I could think of out of a hundred mile race would be the scenery, yeah. the, the the audience. The, yeah. you know seeing the, the the event organizers occasionally you're going to yeah. take all of that away yeah. <laughs> and just have the endurance yeah. <laughs> yeah. It. So just out my window there we do have in a little cul-de-sac yeah it's tiny so in lockdown i ran a 50k yeah my cul-de-sac yeah and it was 530 laps <laughs> my cul-de-sac <laughs> what did you do that for what did you do that for because I had I had a marathon spot at Stratford and I had other races to do that all got cancelled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a half marathon. I just woke up one morning and went, let's do a half marathon outside the front of my house and see what it's like. Yeah. So I did it and it, I quite enjoyed it. So yeah. I then said, Let, let's do the 50K, raise some money for charity. Yeah. And, and it was nice because it was middle lockdown, but we had the neighbours were kind of out in their front gardens. Yeah. <laughs> just to me running up and down. <laughs> Like an idiot. So did he get to a point where they came out quite early doors and cheered you on and then and then realised this is going to go on for hours yeah. and then just went and in? They, <laughs> they just sat there like, chatting across the gardens to each other, completely ignoring me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's why I did my 60 miles non-stop because I had an event planned. I'd signed up to another race to the, yeah. um, I think it was race to the tower I'd signed up for and, yeah. uh, and it got cancelled during the pandemic. So I thought, you know, I could just very easily not do it and no one would 
think anything of me, but I thought I, I, I want to do something. Cause if I, I was at a place where I wasn't ready to start running, yeah. but I needed something to keep me focused on training. Cause I'm the same. I, I, I run cause I enjoy it, but if I haven't got a race planned, I won't run as much. Really? Cause you're, you're, do you know what? Quite a few people have said that. Yeah. And I'm not sure now because I'm, I'm, I was there in, in my head and London marathon does still scare me. But when I've done Lon London marathon, I'm thinking I'd quite like to just to enjoy running yeah. and I'm not have a training plan and not have people keep telling me what I'm doing is wrong. You know, I'd <laughs> like just, to, you know, and if I get an injury, so what, you know, I'll take a couple of weeks off to rest my foot or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'd like to just go out and enjoy it, but you're right. I think after I've done that, then yeah. I might want to do something. So I have a couple of, I'll always have some time in a year where that's all I do. Yeah. Kind of probably not even take a watch, just go out and run, um, take some time. I took two weeks off after the, the Thames 500 and then built up really slowly. Um, but for me, to, yeah, I need to have a goal. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about the goal. It's about the journey to get there. Yeah, I think yeah. that's more important than the goal, but having a goal helps you on that journey. I think It does. Yeah. It's the event. The event is the training, which everyone forgets about. Everyone forgets the, the thousands of miles in training and the hours, hundreds of hours out there in the wind and the rain and the sun. Um, everyone forgets yeah, about that. I completely agree with that saying. I think it's spot on. You've got to enjoy the journey. It's got a, you know, I had a race last year, um, Wendover Woods 50 miler, which is really, really hilly 50 miler near me. Um, it got cancelled as it went into the new lockdown 10 days before the race. Wow. I've done all the training. Yeah. It was all done. But yeah. I didn't, I didn't actually feel that bad about it. Yeah. I was like, well, you know what? That's fine. Yeah. It's got me out. I've done the yeah. training. Yeah. And now that I was, the journey's been a good one. I'm not actually that bothered. Yeah. And you haven't lost anything really because actually you're fit and you've, you know, and you would have yeah, been if you hadn't been. Yeah. I've made some good training. I've, yeah, you feel I've good about it. it. I can see yeah. that. I like that. I think that's good. And that's what I love about talking to you because it really does come across the ground. I'm not sure if you're aware, but it comes across in talking to you that you you make it look. Uh, I, you must be aware of this. You make it look easy. You really do. I mean, I know I know you're 100 miles on the Thames path. Other than that post, which you which I felt really sorry for you, I genuinely <laughs> did because it looked horrendous. Um, uh, but but other than that, you do make it sound very, very effortless. You make it sound very easy. You know, you make it sound like it's something which you enjoy. And and it's you know, that for me, that's where I want to get to. That's in yeah. that's that's my ambition. I need to get out of this mindset, which is more. You know, I need to stop doing this. I need to do more. I need to do more. So Iron Man for me was a big thing. I got yeah. obsessed. All I thought about, all I talked about was doing that, was getting the Iron Man done. Yeah, it's not. It's not healthy, I think. Do you, do you have an Do you have an obsessive personality? A, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Do you think uh, a lot less, of runners? Do you think a lot of runners, especially ultra yeah. ultra runners, do you yeah, think they I have think obsessive so. personalities? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I listened to another um, podcast which you might, which you'll probably love, which is yeah. um, it's called Finding Mastery by a guy called Michael Gervais. Okay. He's a sports psychologist in America. It's brilliant. Uh, it's my favourite podcast. Yeah, he asks runners. Um, are you running towards something or are you running from something? And okay. that is kind of like, well, actually, yeah, that gets you thinking. So that's something yeah, it to does. think about. Why, why are you doing this? Yeah. Is it to get away from something or is it you running towards something? Do you, yeah. you could meet in the middle and it'd be running yeah. away from something and then eventually you start running towards something. Yeah. yeah. Bet, you know, I was trying to move from this person that I was to someone I was trying to reinvent. It was a midlife crisis. <laughs> you know, I was, I was 39 I was 28 stone. I drank more than I did anything else. I didn't spend, I was spending less time with my children. You know, things, my, my career was taking over my life and not in a good way. Yeah. I was running away from that person. But now I've reached a point where I'm now running towards something more. Does that, is, does that resonate yeah, with you? Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think... Um, Have we got tears yet? Uh, yours? No, no, you're not <laughs> 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 I think, and yeah, shoot, shoot me if I'm wrong, but I think you, I think it's still running away from. Do you think so? I think until you, for you or me, whole, what for you? Right. Yeah. I think until the whole not calling yourself a runner. Um, okay. I think in, almost until you've got that. I'm moving towards that though. That's what I'm saying. I'm moving. I'm trying to move towards that. Yeah. Almost feels like you're feel like you're having to do so much to kind of prove. Okay. Whether yourself or to others or yeah i don't know it's all getting very yeah. deep 
Yeah, no, it's good though because it, but, but but it is though, isn't it? I mean, I, I'm in I'm in that place. It's not you're not in that place. I get that. You know, just again listening to you, it's all very easy and all very breezy. And it's part of your life. It's part of your structure, part of your DNA. And I like that. And that's what I want to get to. I want to get to that point where because it is a hobby for me, but it's not a hobby because it's obsessive at the moment. I'm obsessing about it. Yeah, I get that. I'm the same as that. And I'm just the eternal optimist. That's kind of my personality profile is optimism and yeah a positive spin on everything i'll always yeah. do that i'm less obsessive now i think than i was about running but i'm still that's why i'm happy to talk to you for however yeah. long we've been talking for about running because it yeah. is my i love it i love it's it it's my passion yeah it's what i do but at the same time i'm i'm not just a runner mm. you know I'm, I'm not i don't really identify yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. part of what i am yeah um, i think well, three years ago if i couldn't run yeah. I'd be so miserable and grumpy. What would you what right. would you identify yourself as? I mean, I know you're you're a dad and you're a husband and, yeah, and you're, you're a business things. owner. Yeah, all all of those things. All of those yeah. things. Yeah. Family person first. Yeah. That's that's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, but running helps me it helps me a better dad. Yeah. hundred percent. What um, what motivates you in general, in life? My biggest motivation helping people. Okay. It. and That's helping people helping people thrive so and the definition of thrive is kind of grow develop and be successful yeah that's why i do the big job that i do um trustee at a charity that helps you know kids um governor at the school personally for things like this it's challenge yeah yeah i am um, something i'd recommend for you which work really well if you wanted it which worked really well for me with the ultras is i list beforehand the reasons why i'm doing something okay but to write it down i'm yeah. doing this event because of this 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 about 10 things or whatever the top one on the list for the first hundred miler was to do something i don't know if i can finish okay every other thing i've done in the past i, was like, I know i can do this yeah 100 miler was the first one where i was like i don't know if i can yeah 40 people drop out, 40% of people drop out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that challenge to see what you're, see what you're capable of. I remember the day, I remember where I was. Yeah. I was actually in work and I was in one of my shops. Yeah. And uh, I made the decision. I'd had enough. There's something that snapped in my head. Not snapped, that's the wrong term. Something that clicked in my head. Um, and I made a decision that I want to change. I want to change. There was loads going on. I'm not going to go into that because yeah. it's all deep yeah. and we, you know, we've been yeah. on the, we've been here for ages but i knew that my personality i can change direction very very quickly and i knew that i needed something to stay focused on so i signed up there and then on the computer to race to the stones paid for it without yeah. telling anyone and i came yeah. home and i told my miss and she was like you know and remember this is in context not yeah. who i am now she yeah. looked at me and went you have two she was genuinely angry with me you have two children you're going to kill yourself when i told her what it was she had to yeah. google it because she hadn't heard anything about yeah. this so that's why i did that similar to your to your you know your description there that it, it you know being focused on something and then and then but the london marathon is very different to race of the stones because actually part of me knew it was a long walk and i can walk yeah. i could walk and i trained and practiced and it was a walk worst case scenario i could sit on the floor for a little bit longer and then get up and I could keep walking. And I knew that as long as I was done by X time, I could, I could, you know, I could compete it. Whereas the London Marathon, I'm still in a place where I don't know whether I can run. I've never done it. I've never run 26 miles. And then the second thing I did was I made a video about this and, and Eddie Izzard, I don't know if you've watched yeah. what he's accomplished. Yeah, yeah. I say he it should be a she actually. He he changes his gender and identity and wants to be called a she. But I watched his his Twitter feed about his 30 marathons, her 30 marathons in 30 days. Yeah. And it blew me away. And I just and one of the things that she said that she did was was posting it on social media. Because if you have a personality, which is you need to keep a promise, if I've committed yeah. to something, especially if I put it out there, I have to do it. So I that's what I did. I signed up to London Marathon begged the charity to let me do it for them on their behalf, convinced them that I would do it, um, which was hard, and take one of their valuable spaces, because London Marathon is, is payday for charities, and it, uh, understandably, yeah. and then I put it on social media. And, you know, that was tough, because when I put it on social media, I knew I couldn't go back on that. So committing to that, that commitment, which is how you described it, I think is yeah. very important to, 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 to doing something as yeah. big as I, this. I can I think, I think for you though, it's, you need to think about your, just think about your measures of success there. 
So it almost sounds like if if you get to the end of the London Marathon, you finish it averaging 12 and a half minute miles or whatever target you, you've aimed it, but you've walked half a mile of it. Yeah. Is that going to be a positive outcome? Half a mile, half a mile, I'll take half a mile because that might just be me where I've stopped to have a drink and I'm shaking and yeah. I can't get the water in my mouth and I'm putting it over my face. I will yeah. do half a mile just so as I can take on fluid. But if, yeah. if, if you rephrase that question, you've run 20 miles of it, walk six miles of it, no. That's I not. wouldn't, okay. that's not. Because that's not why I've entered it. I, I'd yeah. have done another walking event and run some of it. I'd have entered yeah. into, because that's why I did race to the tower last year, yeah. because I was going to run some of it and then walk a little bit. No, we'll walk all of it and then run a little bit. And it never happened. So I ended up doing my own walking event. It's interesting. Normally I'd recommend people doing their first marathon is not to have a goal target. Like for time. Yeah, don't, you're, not, you're not the first person to say that to me. Just get just get it done. Yeah. Get it done. Do it. But yours isn't a target time. No, it's not. Yours is a target process almost. Yeah. It's a process goal. I don't, yeah. I'm not going to run. And I think about my kids when they go to park run. That's what that's a goal. I said, don't set them a well, not set. I don't set them goals. So you will do X, Y, and Z. But I, yeah. if when I'm talking to them, it's not try and beat yes last week's time. Yeah. It's try and run it all and not walk it. So yeah. it kind of I can kind of see it. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, certainly give yourself a break for the water stations. Yeah. So just that act of walking for 10, 15 paces while you take a drink on. Yeah. Is well worth doing i actually and if you let if you give yourself permission to do that now yeah then you're not going against your your goal that's yeah. part of the plan so we'll get to the a station and the time it takes me to have four slugs or whatever it i'm gonna walk it it helps you get the fluid on board i've built it in such a big thing in my head graham you can even i'm, I'm i can even take myself out of this conversation and hear myself saying it i've built it into such a big thing in my head that Anything short of what I've built it up to be, I will see it as being a, a, a failure. I will, because um, it's because it, that's just my nature. The general thinking with London is run within yourself to yeah. Tower Bridge. Yeah. Okay. Because Tower Bridge is halfway point. Yeah. Um, you want to take it really, really, really slowly. Okay. Uh, you will walk in the first mile, but that won't be your choice because it'll be too busy. Because it's too busy. I'm hoping that because of the pandemic, it might be. Less yeah, I don't know less. what they'll do with numbers and stuff, but yeah, yeah in a normal year, yeah, that it will it goes past some bollards and stuff like yeah. that, and it condenses up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you don't want to get to that and go, oh, bugger it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. stopping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm giving up. Yeah, get the other. Yeah. Which, which knowing me is very, yeah. you know, <laughs> if you've got that really binary yeah. black or white goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. What does your head do at that point yeah. when you go, I've done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just really quickly, talk to me about your um, diet, your nutritional intake when you're not training for a big event, but you're just out running, and then what you do differently training for a big event. So I'm interested in you going vegan. I think that's I think that's great. Um, so I've gone vegetarian. I did it last January. Right. And I did it just, let's do it for January and see yeah. how I get on. Yeah. Uh, what made you want to do this before, before, before you talk about it? What made me want to do yeah. it? The main reason is probably, it's probably environmental. Okay. I listen to Rich Roll a lot and read yeah. his stuff and you know has lots of people on there talking about the single biggest thing you can do is move towards a plant-based diet yeah, to help 100%. the environment and that was it really and they did it for a month and loved it felt so much better yeah I've gone back I'd, I'd do vegan yeah um, but that's gonna have to wait until the kids are a bit older I think because yeah. one of you as well people say well I'm not going vegan so or my wife's saying I'm not going vegan so then we're gonna okay. have three different meals going on potentially. Yeah. and then race week so up the carbs about three days before reduce the protein up the carbohydrate about three days before it's normally best and then on a race day so for a hundred miler i'll do i'll have a plan so i've got it all planned out i'll do some energy stuff in the and sandwiches early on um and then it will go to um Baby Bell cheeses are good for yeah. ultra, and baby food. Okay. Ella's food, Ella's pouches, baby food is what gets <laughs> me through the end of it. And then Coca Cola. Coca Cola is like rocket fuel when you're when you're tired and your body shut down. Flat Coke is brilliant. Okay. So I've, I've had loads of people mention Flat Coke, and I saw it at Race of the Stones, and it was a guy at a pit stop that he was stirring this cauldron. 
yeah. it must have had gallons of flat coke in it. Uh, and it just made me gag at the thought of drinking <laughs> warm, flat coke. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's your body, something in it. It's, your body can take it, it, how it can take on fuel changes as you get more more into an event. Yeah. Once you, if your stomach shuts down, you just want energy in its rawest form, which is glucose, and yeah. that's Coca Cola. So okay. if you can't take on any food. That's just going to give you pure energy, which you will then burn off really quickly. But then you drink some more, and that's kind of how it works. Okay. Um, what do you What do you eat when you run? So very similar to you, I don't really change my diet. So the diet, the diet we eat now, my my wife is a great cook. Um, she's the reason that we're all vegan because she backed up my my eldest. So me yeah. and Scarly kind of went along with the flow initially, which was a bit of a struggle. It was, I'm not going to lie, it wasn't the easiest transition. I actually found giving up alcohol easier than I did giving up meat because we had to give up all of the things we loved. The trick was that we, she, she did this. I say we, you know, it's completely my missus. She's a superhero. Yeah. Um, but she cooked us things that were very similar to things that we loved, but just re- yeah. replaced the meat element yeah. or the dairy element, which, yeah. you know, back to your point around transitioning from vegetarian to vegan, you'll be surprised how easy it is. There's so many phenomenal um, uh, replacements that you can have. I wouldn't even consider, even if we went back, which we never would, but if we ever went back tomorrow, I wouldn't even consider drinking milk. This, you know, yeah. Alpro soy milk. Mm. It's such a taste. It's, it's tastier. It's, it's better for you. Yeah, yeah. There's so many different replacements. But throughout the day, I was in a world where I wasn't eating enough calories. So I quickly learned that. I quickly, you know, snapped myself out of that mentality. I was having, you know, I have a bowl of cereal in the morning. I'm pretty yeah. bad because I'm still, I still enjoy a bowl of um, uh, Frosties, which is too sugar. Yeah. It's the only sugar I have, really. Yeah. I don't yeah. eat sweets. I don't eat chocolate. I don't like sweets or anything like that. I learned the hard way from doing my walking event not to take on sugar on events because you have the high but then you immediately have the low um lunch i normally I, I i'm trying to cut out bread because i eat too much bread i pretty much i will have croissants in the morning sometimes i love croissants you know lunch will be a sandwich or something i'm trying to cut out the bread on that and then with dinner i'd always have some bread with dinner um yeah. so it's too much um because i'm burning that instead of burning fat reserves um yeah. And then dinner will be, you know, very similar to what you said. It will be, it always would include some kind of bean or lentil, um, which I love. I love that sort of stuff. I can eat salad by the bucket loads. Um, pasta, curry. We love, you know, a, a vegan curry. Tofu, I love tofu. Um, my favourite meal at the moment is um, a, a, a ramen. Um, so it's, it's pretty much a spicy noodle soup. So that's, what that's when you're running? So when I'm running, I'm really bad. And this is why I asked you. So I'm, I've only just started taking on water on long, long runs. So up until yeah. now, I would run 10 miles without water, um, yeah. 15 miles, which you could probably do, but I was struggling with. So I found now that I'm able to run further because I'm less dehydrated. So what, what I tend to do now when I go out on a long run is I'll hide water in a bush because I don't want to carry it. I might plan a 20 miler soon and I'm going to go drop, drop 20 miles away. And then what I'll do is I'll stop at two bushes on the way and I'll, I'll hide it in the bush because I can't wear, I can't wear a hydration vest. But yeah, that, that's what I do. And then, um, yeah, nothing really, if I'm honest. I'm pretty bad. What do you do? That's probably the thing to sort, I yeah. think, yeah. Before, before the marathon. Um, so your body can store about an hour and a half's worth of fuel. Okay. And then after an hour and a half, that's all used up. So you want to try and train with what you'll then use on the on the race day. You can eat about 70 to 90 grams of carbs an hour. Right. And if you want to take that will help you when you get to 20 miles in your marathon. Um, if so, you do so, that. so what do you so give me actual tangible food that you take? What do you do and how do you carry it? If I was marathon training and yeah. I was going about 20 miler, I would take a drink, like an energy drink. I use something called Tailwind, but then I'd also use um, gels. So I use high five energy gels okay. and um, shot blocks, uh, like little little chewy sweet yeah. things. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing ultra training, I'd take a peanut butter and jam sandwich or something like that as well. Yeah. And just munch on that. Baby bell cheese. Uh, uh, it's whatever works for you. Different okay. different people can just. Some people run a hundred miles are just on gels yeah i can i can sum it that but okay. it's just try stuff just yeah i will practice. i will i'll give it yeah it is, it is it is practice trial and error if you don't get the fueling right on the race day 
you won't have a choice about walking. Okay. Because when you hit that full wall, yeah, like, oh, it's it's someone else. It's, yeah. a, it's not a nice feeling. And no. you'd really, if if you run in twelve and a half minute miles, you'll struggle to keep near that pace. Yeah. The other recommendation is well, I don't know what you do already, but when you finish a run, how quickly do you eat or drink? Not very quick. I drink very quickly. I drink quite a lot actually. I, I'm very good at hydration. I drink gallon loads of water a day. Yeah, you have about 20 minutes, a yeah. window of about 20 minutes, where if you can fuel with some carbohydrate and protein, that will help you recover for the next day. Okay. Uh, you can get recovery drinks that will be fine. So I do that, like chocolate milkshakes. They're beautiful. Okay. So Tailwind do one, uh, and I do one which is called For Goodness Shakes, it's called. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's good, it's good. That just yeah. gets you, you can't eat, drink that, and it will sort you out for the next yeah. The next step. Right, last question. Yeah. Last question. So just just so as you're ready for this, I'm going to build this up. So this is the best question so far, and you're going to love this. Mm-hmm. All right, so you can absolutely go to town on this, all right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going, to, I'm going to put some really, you know, euphoric music, big, yeah. you know, crescendo music over this as, as I ask this question, okay? So are you ready for this? So I'm ready. Just, I need to context it so the answer matches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your running mantra? <laughs> <Loved it>. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I need to get I need to get rid of that music now. You completely ruined it. <laughs> you got to have something that's cliche. Every runner has a cliche quote. Every runner I've met, I've I'm yet to meet one yet. You're that laid back that you don't have a running mantra. I don't think I've got a running mantra. <laughs> you need to get one. You need to get one. Make one up now. I don't have a running mantra, okay. um, but. I use I use like positive affirmations when you're in a run, yeah. and you can work out beforehand. And I can't remember what they were for the last one, but you you do it right in a positive language. So rather than saying I'm not going to do this, I'm yeah, I'm not going to walk. Yeah, yeah. So yours, you could think I'm not going to walk. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a negative. Yeah, yeah. But that's a negative mindset. Yeah. So yours could be I'm always going to run. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep running. Yeah. yeah that just switch, switches switches the. Because there's a lot of research that says if you if you tell yourself not to do something, you're more likely to do it. Do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Golfer saying don't miss the putt is far more likely to miss the putt than saying this is going in the middle of the hole. Yeah. Yeah? So just flip it round so it's a kind of positive. Yeah. Positive. I like the Iron Man. Anything is possible. Yeah. I think that's a good one, but I can't claim to that because that's that's pretty cliche. That one, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's been been done to death, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the army one, isn't it? Oh no, that's that's who dares wins, isn't it? There's a Dean Carnass's one which you won't like because it talks about walking. Okay. It's like, what is it? Um, so I'm not anti-walking. It's just I'm, I've just got this thing for the marathon. That's all. <laughs> it's um, run if you have to, walk if you must, crawl if you need to, but never give up. Something like that. Yeah, that's shit. If you're crawling, if you're crawling, you've given up. There's yeah. something, gone, there's something fundamentally gone wrong there. Yeah, it's gone wrong, but yeah, you're it up. You're <laughs> doing a 250 mile ultra marathon. <laughs> just keep moving, and just you're just dragging forward. yourself along, <laughs> thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking that mantra. Yeah, I've got 150 miles left to go. I can do yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, good. Yeah. But, but I don't, I don't really have next, next time we talk, I hope there'll be a next time because I've really yeah. enjoyed this. Absolutely, it's been um, great, mate. Could you come up with a mantra, please? I can try. Yeah, you what's need your one? running mantra? So, so I like, I like, I always have the Rocky one, which is, which is a massive clean. Can you see it on, on, let me yeah. move, move the camera up. So I've got, uh, I have that on my office wall. Uh, it is a massive cliche, which is, it's not. Well, whenever I hear that, I think of you. Yeah. I must have heard you say it about 50 times. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I used to say it a lot when we worked together, but, yeah. it, but it, but it is, it's a cliche for a reason because it is, it's something which has resonated with me, my, yeah. my my through when i changed my mentality which isn't how, how hard you hit yeah. it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward that's how winning is done and the reason why i say that is because a lot of people live their lives thinking that it's how loud you are or how obnoxious you are or how how hard you hit something or you know just bashing down barriers is is how you win well actually it isn't it's when you yeah. take on adversity when things yeah. go wrong it's how you react to that and that's something which I've always, and it, it, it's very similar to when I read your post. That's why it resonated with me, because I saw that actually, if everything goes right, if everything goes well, your 100 miles is easy, lovely day, nice and cool. You smash out that 100 miles. Of course, you're going to feel great because it means your training worked. But you learn more about yourself and you learn more about your race yeah. when it went wrong. 
Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more with that. That is spot on. And if, have you heard um, the poem "The Man in the Arena" by Theodore Roosevelt? No, I haven't. I haven't. Look, look I haven't. it up. You'll okay. like that. Okay. Yeah, you'll like that. What does that so, What does that say? Talks about um, it's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who kind of. It's it's like it's not the man who watches the doer of deeds get things wrong. It's about the person that's in the arena sweat dripping yeah. um kind of learning the difference between kind of winning and losing yeah and between like life and death and that kind of stuff it's um yeah it's yeah it's a really good one i've just actually butchered it but it's um... <laughs> <laughs> that's good i like it no but it's you know but it, it, it's, it's that mentality and that's the reason why not a lot of people can do what you've done because it's easy to talk about these things it's easy to write a quote it's easy to put a post on a wall but it's when you're at 50 miles and your legs have given out and you've still got further to go than you've already done or the yeah. same distance again, yeah. you know, you've got two options. You've only got two options. There isn't a third option. There isn't a plan C. You've only got A or B, which is to keep going and it'd be the worst yeah. 15 yeah. hours of your life yeah. or to stop. stop. Yeah. And you know that the stop is easier because no one's going to judge you for that. But you know you're going to judge yourself. So you have that option and you don't take option B. Absolutely. You know, so that's, this is a really good ending. That music can stay. <laughs> but I've ruined it. I talk it over it. Um, <laughs> um, anything I've missed? Anything you want to add? I, th I think it's good. I think it's I, I just as I said at the beginning, I think your you are your story is massively inspirational. Thanks, it mate. is it is phenomenal, I think. Yeah, I think just the physical transformation in you and the mindset change to to get there is just it's phenomenal you yeah. know it's it's phenomenal i don't think you yeah i know you don't take advice well but i think that <laughs> you know, it's about the journey not yeah. that destination yeah you know if you get to and I'm, i don't think for one minute this is going to happen but if you get to london and you end up having to walk a couple of miles at the end of it i hope that if that does happen, you can still be really proud of that journey that you've taken yeah. to get from where you were, yeah, to where you, yeah, where you are now, and where yeah. you will be in October. It's just, it's just phenomenal. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you saying that. I really do, and I won't walk. I won't <laughs> because, and it, and it does piss me off because people say it to me, and people that know me a long time have said yeah. that to me because they remember who I was, and it's. I'm not that person and I won't allow me to tell myself to be that person. So walking is that person. Um, but, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And you know, you wouldn't say it to someone who has been running and you didn't know their history. You wouldn't say, you know, go to the London Marathon. It's okay. You can walk some of it, you know? Um, anyway, yeah, that's kind of where my head's at with that. But, but I appreciate, I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you saying it. Cause that's, you know, you know, the last two hours, two hours and ten minutes of talking has been the most enlightening two hours and ten minutes I've had in a very long time. You know, talking to people like you. The way my head's at, it's about the journey to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that's the, and if you can, and I know I've been doing it a lot longer, if you can get into that place, and even to the extent of the run in October just being another run. Yeah. Probably more likely to do well in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just another run. Yeah. And it is obvious when you say it, when you make, when you make it sound that simple. Because it is, it's, it's true. You know, you, big, you you build something up to such a point that it becomes yeah. far more. There's a lot of research that supports it as well. And there's a lot of stuff that says that's the, but there's different different schools of thought. Some people say, well, you need to get really G'd up about it and everything, but do you? Yeah, it's about the journey, isn't it? Enjoy the journey. About the journey, isn't it? Yeah, about the journey. About the journey, isn't it? <laughs> That's your running mantra. We've got it. It's about the journey, isn't it? The journey, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's brilliant. Love oh. It. This has been great. I've loved it. Yeah, yeah. I've really enjoyed this. Done, isn't it? Done, <laughs> Go to the pub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, listen, mate, I really appreciate this time. No, Thank I you appreciate it. Thanks for reaching out. I think it's been great. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Well done, mate. Good luck with your journey. Thanks, mate. Stick to, stick, I think for you, stick to what you don't take everyone's. Everyone's got advice for you. Yeah. yeah. No, you've got to do what's right for you. Yeah. But at the same time, you, the advice is there for a reason. Isn't it? Yeah. So, it's a bit of yeah. Dense behind lots of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I will. I will. And, you know, it's, I, I need, I, I, I am listening. I am listening. But it does, you know, it does play with your head a little bit because you always think, is there more I should be doing? Whereas actually what I should be doing is probably raining in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but maybe one day, one day in a distant future, we could, um, we might have a dabble in doing a race together. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Top cool. man. Well, look, enjoy Bye. the rest of your day. Cheers, Thank mate. You. Take it easy. See, See ya. ya. Bye. Ah.